much about his story, so I thought I'd better do some research. And I'll tell you, Glenn, the more I read about this guy, uh, the more uh, the compa- uh, compelling the story became. Mm-hmm. And I just felt this is a, a story that had to be told. And so we we put together um, uh, financing for this. Uh, mostly it was uh, Lee Blackman, who's our executive producer, and he's the attorney for the Nielsen estate. So we this really is an indie film. Uh, the, the finance was put together independently, and we sort of were making this film uh, betwixt and between other projects. And uh, uh, and here we are. We we open in th- in, in uh, theaters in New York uh, uh, in September, and, and spread out across the country, and doing some one night uh, onlys. We we did one in Minneapolis, actually October 9th, I think, at at a festival there. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, um, and uh, and and now we're out on DVD and. Um, really excited for people to see the uh, results of all this work and the reviews of uh, you you've gotten your, your fair share of some really positive press and that is just that that is just excellent uh, because it, it really gets a chance to uh, get some people who aren't necessarily familiar with uh, Harry Nielsen initially to actually open up and, and listen to what a magnificent voice this guy had and, and the albums that went with it I mean a lot of people you know you got you know, one side of the camp that said yeah I know him and really appreciate him and other people you, you say the name and it just you, you hear nothing you hear crickets chirping <laughs> well I'll, I'll tell you a story I was uh, out east uh, speaking at a um, uh, college uh, about documentary programming and and, uh, and and how you make a documentary and all of that mm-hmm. and and uh, I took questions afterwards and somebody said so what are you working on I said well I'm finishing up this film about Harry Nilsson, and I don't know about you, Glenn, but I, I don't know that I've been in a room before where a hundred people didn't know what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> Name meant absolutely nothing to them, but but then as I started to mention all of the songs that he wrote or sang that he had hits with, people go, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know that one. And uh, so I would mention, you know, Everybody's Talking, which is the theme song from the great mm-hmm. film Midnight Cowboy, and won a Grammy for that. I said, oh, I know that one. And I said he did this, this song called Me and My Arrow for an animated uh, a picture called The Point. He said, oh, I know that one. And he did this goofy little song that it was a hit in the 70s and then, then uh, was in a Coca-Cola commercial in 2006 uh, called Put the Lime into Coconut. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did that? I know that. <laughs> and then I got to, and he wrote One is the Loneliest Number. And, uh, oh, all, you know, practically all 100 heads sort of nodded <laughs> at that one. But uh, So I said to them, you know, you know the, the music, but you don't know the man. And that's what we're trying to remedy with this film. And, uh, yes, we got great press, uh, including a wonder. If, if my mother had written this column, Glenn, it couldn't have been any better. There was a <laughs> full-page column by Stephen King, the best-selling author in yeah. Entertainment Weekly, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that was and, a great article, by the way. That much kudos yeah, to you. Just great. And but you know, yes, it's it's uh, of course it's great to get all the reviews. Uh, but but equally great is I, I'm hoping it's going to draw attention to the film. So people really get a chance to, to experience the sound of Nilsson. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, you know, what we mentioned earlier on in his career, you know, he put out some fantastic albums. It, uh, it, he definitely got some big fans in the form of the Beatles who were uh, really just floored by this man and uh, thus beginning a relationship, uh, especially with John and Ringo with, with Harry through his life. Very much so. Uh, it was one of those interesting um, accidental um moments, uh, and and we talk about it in the film, the publicist for the Beatles was a guy named Derek Taylor, and he was in Los Angeles and happened to hear on the radio um, this song by Harry, uh, uh, one of his very first tracks, called 1941. And he was just, he he said, this is great, I have to, who did this? And he tracked it down, uh, the fact that it was Harry Nilsson, and he bought, you know, a whole box of albums, and he sent them to everybody he knew in England. Uh, including the Beatles, um, uh, just to say you got to hear this guy, and uh, and and they listened and they were really impressed by by his voice and his sound and his songs and uh, they invited him to to come over uh, to uh, watch them record in the studio, which he did during uh, the sessions for what became the White Album and it really uh, established uh, friendships that uh, continued uh, for the rest of uh, everybody's life. Mm-hmm. I really love Harry's version of She's Leaving Home. Ah, uh, it's beautiful, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's just, uh, you can't get, it's so close, it, it, it's the closest thing to perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, I remember uh, I remember watching a movie last summer, I think it was one of those late night, Friday night movies on Turner Classic Films, and it was uh, the movie, Otto Preminger uh, directed movie Skidoo, 
and I noticed this music. It's like, wow, this is some really clever stuff. And it was at the end of it, I saw music by Harry Nielsen. <laughs> and I thought it was so clever at the end of the movie that he uh, rattled off all the credits while making it musical. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's, that's how his mind worked. He really sort of looked at the world in a different way. A lot of people, a, a, a producer, musician in our film, Trevor Lawrence, makes the point that uh, a lot of people were mostly just writing love songs, you know, mm-hmm. except the Beatles, which, of course, uh, made them so unique. And, but Harry wasn't. Harry, Harry would find very interesting things to write about in, in very interesting ways. And uh, that's what made him so original. And, and um, a Skidoo being one of them, I, I admire you for being able to sit through that movie. It's, it's, well, it's not, not, not the best movie. The <laughs> Jackie Gleason acid trip scene in the jail was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> or Groucho so, Marx's God. You know, yeah, that was... <laughs> it, it, I mean, it could have went so right, but it went so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it really is it's not a great film, but uh, Harry also has a, has a cameo in there as a guard. But, yes, he, he wrote the credits and sang the credits, and there's a couple other nice songs in there. You know, uh, speaking of Beatles uh, covers, he, he on, on the Harry album, which was his third album, he did a beautiful uh, rendition of uh, Mother Nature's Son, uh, oh. Paul's song. And uh, so a, a, a lot of great music and and that's the other cool thing about the film um, that that your listeners should know is that uh, there are bits and pieces of 61 Harry songs in this film which is a lot for any movie much less a documentary so you get a real broad array of Harry's music to sample in this film Mm -hmm. and it was definitely chock full of great clips and stuff I like the uh, television special uh, he did was it over in the UK where he he had three different versions of him it was kind of a little trick with the (laughs) camera I thought that was like incredibly cheesy but rather brilliant I mean the music was so good you just forgot about the cheesiness yeah well you know uh, from from our standpoint today it's it's cheesy yeah Uh, but it was kind of in the earlier days of videotape and the idea of having three of the same person on screen, not everybody did that. So it was kind of fresh at the time. But I think an interesting thing um, uh, to, to note about Harry is uh, today um, when artists are out there, they're, they're touring, they're doing talk shows, they're doing everything to get themselves and their music out there. And uh, Harry made a decision early on in his career that he was not going to tour. He was not going to perform live. And in fact, in his entire career, he uh, he, he only performed uh, you know a couple of songs on stage here and there, but never did a concert. That's amazing. And that makes it really hard um, to build a career that way because people just aren't out there seeing you. And he also did precious few television appearances, uh, but but he did do two specials for the BBC. Mm-hmm. The only way he would do them is is uh, uh, if there was not an audience there. Because I think it was audiences really that made him nervous, yeah. and uh, so he did these two specials, and we were able to to use a lot of clips from those and, and a couple of American TV shows that he did. Mm-hmm. And it was in the early '70s too. He he really started to kind of explore. He made one of the, the probably one of the best albums in rock at the, t- at the time and to this day. Nielsen Schmielsen, He kind of started hooking up with our producer Richard Perry. Now let's talk about this relationship. Well, a great uh, great artistic uh, relationship. Um, I think they'd sort of uh, passed each other in the night uh, here and there. They they knew uh, who the other one was, but uh, they finally met up in ni- early 1971 and uh, uh, liked each other immediately, and uh, and they started to work on Nielsen Schmilson together. Uh, Richard decided that uh, it ought to be recorded in London because there was a studio there that had a particular sound that uh, he wanted for Harry, so they went over to London, and they were there for about two or three months making Nelson Schmilson. And um, uh, interesting, a um, uh, whole uh, wide array of experiences in the making of this album, and you'll see that in the film. We, we detail them and from, from how they found the songs to the working relationship to who the um, supporting musicians were, uh, including Ringo and, and the young Peter Frampton, mm-hmm. very young Peter Frampton. <laughs> and... Um, uh, anyway, uh, they, they, and of course the highlight was was "Without You," which is one of the great power ballads of all time, and uh, how they came across that song and and what Harry really thought about that song uh, are really quite fascinating. And we had a lot of uh, it's a lot of great music. You can play that album start to finish, and there's not a weak song on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And it really 